this is Shelley here. Welcome to my channel and thank you for joining me today. Today's video will be a colour along from Hannah Carlson's Tales from the Witch's Cottage and the page I chose is The Wishing Well or I call it The Wishing Well at least. This is an uncoloured book so I'm so glad that I'm finally getting around to colouring a page in this book. I think I probably got this book last year, if I'm not mistaken. Um, and it's taken me ages to just get started in this book. So I've been planning to try and colour a page from this book since February. So I think it was in my um, plans to colour or, you know, one of my choices to colour since then. And I think I had sort of set it aside for a colour along as well, a totally different page, but I had set it aside thinking I would do a colour along on the channel for it and um, I just haven't got round to it till today. So despite it being a different page in the book, I'm so glad that I got inspired to colour this page and I have really enjoyed colouring this page um, and definitely enjoyed recording it for you guys and I hope you guys enjoy following along if you do follow along or at least just watching um, how this page unfolds. So I'll be using soft pastels for the background first, um, specifically the Faber Castell brand but you can use any soft pastels you like and the pencils I'll be using <laughs> are the Faber Castell Arbrick Dura pencils, um, no surprise there but I will be activating them quite a lot with water on this particular page but um, if you don't like using watercolour pencils, that's absolutely fine. Just use normal pencils and just follow along without having to do a base layer. Um, I do try and share my swatches on screen. I don't know how accurate they are, but hopefully it gives you a rough idea in case you're using a totally different brand of pencils. Um, you know, so you could try and match it up as closely as you as you can. Um, but the polychromos match up exactly just to just in case you don't want to use watercolor pencils. And then I will also be using Thule Art paint pens um, for giving a bit of highlights, for covering up some black lines and for filling in some spaces as well this time on this page. So you'll see that in the video and I'll use a, a little bit of glitter gel pen, not too much. And right at the end off camera, I will be sprinkling the page with Winsor & Newton white ink. So the reason I chose this page, first of all, I'd chosen this page back in um, February. Before that, I, got, I think I got the book around last year, September. So the page I had picked out was for um, a sort of a halloween -y page. So it was obviously this entire book is about witches and magic and stuff like that. But um, they, the, the specific page I think I'd chosen for Halloween was I think a spell book and you know a potion or something like that a dragon um from what I remember um but I didn't get around to doing it in Halloween last year so when it came to choosing what pages I'd like to color I think for the spring season I picked out this particular page because I thought that I was going to try and make it look you know, spring, spring like, so make it colorful, make it, um, you know, pretty trees, pretty flowers, colorful basically, and give a vibe of spring rather than, um, anything too magical. So that's what I had in mind a few months back when I <laughs> chose this particular page. Then I came to just pick it up. Uh, I think was it last week? I picked up this book and that page jumped out at me, and I was inspired to just get started. And I still sort of had the idea because I thought about it a few months ago that I was going to make it like a spring page. But uh, when I looked at the page this time, I decided um, on the color of the background straight away. I don't know why, but the color of the background, which um, you'll see on screen, is what was jumping out at me. And so I decided, OK, fine, I'm not going to make it um, a daytime scene. Maybe I can still work with sort of the spring idea in my mind, but um, just do it sort of like, a, you know, a different colored sky. So I went ahead and I did this color of the sky background that I sort of had in mind. And after I did that and I saw how dark the page looked, I was like, there's no way I'll be able to make it spring like. And so I didn't have any other idea on what I was going to do on this page other than that background. 
because I was so set on wanting to do a spring sort of page, um, as soon as I did the background, I obviously had to change route completely. But I, I didn't really get stuck. I think I just sort of looked at the page and I was like, OK, I'm going to let the page unfold in front of me. And I started to choose the colors of the trees. Now, at the beginning of the video, you'll have seen that I had a palette there with the colors of soft pastels. What I was going to do is do the background as I had chosen, like with red violets and um, violet and quite a dark sky. But um, I think I used a bit of pink carmine, light magenta. Yeah. So those are the kind of colors I wanted for the sky. But on the palette, you'll see that I had some greens as well, because I was going to also base my trees with soft pastel when I first, um, you know, started preparing the page. And so I have it on the palette, but I did not use any of the greens on the palette. And the greens I had chosen were my regular earth yellow sort of greens. And after I did the sky, I was like, that is not going to work for me. My mind completely changed and I wanted to make this page more um, sort of whimsical, sort of magical, um, non-realistic. That's what jumped out at me as soon as I'd done the background. And so I did not end up using the um, soft pastels that I had sort of chosen for the trees. And I decided to go for turquoise greens for my trees. Um, and so I started with the trees on the sort of the top of the page, so the actual trees. And um, I loved how it was coming along. So I, I started playing with my my Arbitura pencils with regards to basing it with a few layers of like the turquoises and then going over with some greens and just adding colors. I think I put in a bit of purple um, and I was just having fun with those trees. So then when it came to do the bushes, I was like, I didn't want them all to be the same color as the trees. So I decided to go for the more purpley based ones. And I, in my mind, I had thought that they were gonna be a lot lighter. Um, because otherwise everything was becoming too dark but it ended up becoming dark like it normally does with me I just keep adding color and um, so yeah it became quite dark the bushes but I love the color I chose again so I went for the more purpley idea but um, with hints of a little bit of blue and stuff like that and I yeah I, I just really liked how it was looking once the trees and bushes were done, the page just instantly came to life for me because it just took a totally different turn. It became magical. It looked so different to how I usually color because I would normally go for the, you know, yellow greens and keep things a bit more realistic. So I absolutely loved how it was looking. In fact, I was just watching um, the first Avatar the other day and it, it, it looked like Pandora for me basically um, with all the bright colors um, in that world so yeah I, I just really liked how it turned out. Before I go any further I did want to mention that I did use the soft pastels at the start of um, the page for the background and I did use an electric eraser a Derwent electric eraser to erase any parts that I did not want covered with soft pastels and then I used a fixative, Winsor & Newton workable fixative, which I show on screen this time, um, before I carried on with the rest of the page. The reason I'm mentioning this, and I, I don't know why I forgot again, was um, because on one of my previous videos, probably just the maybe Wild Mouse Yururi, I did forget to show on screen the fixative I use and I think I normally do show it when I use soft pastels but I did happen to forget on that video and I got a request um to share it in in the future so I think I'd already recorded this this video but um I remember to put it on screen this time so just in case um yes I use soft pastels at the beginning on this particular page before I start working with my pencils so I do erase anything I don't want and then I use a workable fixative um specifically the Windsor and Newton one um I spray the page let it dry and then I start working with all my other mediums I've also had a, a question regarding whether my pencils work okay 
um, after I've sprayed a page with fixative. Yes, they work absolutely fine. And I can, as you'll see on screen, activate the pencils as well. Um, and the water works fine. I don't think it gets resisted with the fixative. So I had got a, a, a question in one of my videos about um, how the activating part works um, on paper that has been you know, sprayed with fixative um, at the beginning. And to me, it works absolutely fine. I've done that quite a few times because I do tend to use soft pastels quite a lot. And if I use them for backgrounds, I tend to try and do my backgrounds first a lot of times. Um, so yeah, I've not had any issues with that. And I just wanted to mention that before I forget, which I obviously did. Um, so I'm glad it came to my mind. You may see on screen that there are certain areas that the eraser doesn't get rid of the, the soft pastels completely when I try to erase it. But um, I, I used a lot of soft pastels and I was using the black and stuff like that. So quite dark colors and I was going over and over to get that intense background that I wanted. And because of that, yes, not all the soft pastel got erased. But when I go over with the pencils, it does cover it up. And I also use paint pens at the end. Um, so it didn't, it didn't cause any issues for me when I was coloring. All right, so going back to discussing the page, um, basically I'd done the trees and the bushes and I loved how it was looking and I was actually excited to color the well. I think that's the, the thing that actually grabbed me to this page was I wanted to work on those bricks um, and or the stones and I was, yeah, I was excited to color that and I chose to go for gray, so I didn't want to add too much brown. Um, the page was quite a cool, like, at this point, the page was um, mainly cool colors. And so I didn't want to bring too much warmth to it um, right away. So I didn't want to use too many browns um, or yellow browns. So I decided to go for, and I didn't think reds would work. So I decided to go for gray bricks, but I did add hints of um, green um, as an as a base. So I, I used green and I activated it with water to create sort of a greenish base and then worked with my greys on top of that so that there was a hint of green to it but the stones were actually grey. Um, and I like that effect. So I was really enjoying using my Albrecht Durers on this particular page for some reason. I was just get, getting inspired to do, um, you know, a little bit of mixing with my, my pencils, with, with the colours. Um, so yeah, so I enjoyed doing this, the, the stonework for the well. And it gave a little, I think the greens I chose, which was olive green, yellowish and earth green yellowish I think and they brought a little bit of warmth to the page and then the roof of the well I decided to go for blues but different blues to what I'd used in the trees but um, yeah I really liked how that turned out and I think I used a bit quite a bit of gray on it as well and um, then I was I'd kept the wood uh, the, like the framework sort of of the, the wood framework um, to the end because I wasn't sure what color I was going to do because to me the most natural thing is to go for brown wood but like I said when I was looking at my page after the trees and bushes and all were done I didn't think that brown would would fit as well um, with the magical feel of the page and so I was a little bit stuck but um, then I decided to just use the similar greys that I've used for the stonework and sort of bring in a little bit of blue from the roof um, onto the wood um, so that it just differentiates the, the wood colour to the stones a little bit. So I used majority of the same colours I used on the stonework for the wood but I added um, the little bit of blue to it like literally little random hints of blue and um, yeah I was really happy with how the wood turned out. For the ground I decided to go for brown finally. I thought a little bit of a warmer colour would work um, in the page just break up all the cool colours and also I'd used a lot of grey already so I decided to go for brown um, but I tried to keep it quite light and um, yeah, following that, I had to then decide what to do with all the flowers that were there and the leaves. 
So the leaves were a little bit easy, there were lots of them, so I just decided to base it with a Tombow Jewel brush pen and I decided to go for the colours that were on the trees, so the turquoise sequins. I decided to bring it down to the bottom of the page to do the leaves and to break up all the purple that was there. So yeah, so the leaves were decided and then I had to choose what colour to do the flowers. The flowers were quite small and it would have taken me quite a while to do it with pencils. Um, but one colour that definitely jumped out for me, which I wouldn't normally have gone for, was yellow. So normally my, again, my natural instinct would have been to go for a pink, a light pink, or, you know, sort of muted skin, to skin tone sort of pinks. Um, so that was my natural instinct. But when I'd done the ground and that brown ochre I used, I thought that, oh, a very pale yellow would look really nice on the purple. Um, and so I decided to go for yellow. I decided to go for a very light blue, which was which which made sense because there was quite a bit of blue on the page. So it's not a new color I would use. And I decided to then add a little bit of pink again, a very light pink. But because the flowers were so small, I decided to use paint pens to color the flowers. Now, what I would normally have done was use pencils and then covered the black lines or given a bit of highlight with my paint pens at the end. But because they were so small, I knew that I was going to struggle to get a very fine line with my paint pens um, to cover the black lines without affecting the shading on the tiny flowers. And so I decided, why don't I just fill in all these little flowers with the paint pens and then that will cover up the black lines and then just use my pencils over top to give it a little bit of shading um, so that it doesn't look like a flat color and hopefully that will work. So it was a little bit of experimenting. It was a bit risky to do that, but I'm glad I did because I think it worked and I had the right colors I wanted in the paint pens, especially the yellow because I wanted a very pale yellow. I did use a paintbrush, so you will see that Basically what I did was dab a little bit of um, paint pen, usually at the tips of the flowers where I definitely wanted the black lines to be covered. And then I'd use a very small paintbrush. It's a, just a cheap one, but it's I think a size zero. So that's probably the smallest you can get um, because the flowers are so small. And I just um, sort of smoothed out the paint um, on the paper and filled out the flowers. And the reason I did this was one to sort of just, yeah, spread the, the paint um, a bit easier without having to use the paint pen because sometimes they can be a bit blobby and a bit more paint than you want comes out. So it sort of gave me a little bit more control. And the second reason I did it is I don't usually have trouble um, coloring over paint pens. Like I know some people complain that they can't, but I don't always have trouble with it but yes it is difficult to put many layers over the paint pens so i thought that if i use the paintbrush to sort of um paint out the the paint on the paper it will flatten it out a little bit so it won't be as bumpy it will be smoother it'll it's an opaque paint because it's acrylic paint so it'll still cover up the black lines and i'll be able to put more than one uh, layer of pencil over it because I still wanted to use a couple of colors of pencils to give that little bit of shading that I wanted on the flowers. And it worked wonderfully. I'm so glad I tried that out. Um, because yeah, I do play around with my paint pens quite a lot recently. And um, I have tried doing that. Um, I think in a page I did last month, I think it was an Erie page, and I used my paint pens to just basically fill out um, some areas completely and then used a pencil to give a shadow and another paint pen to sort of give a highlight and it works really well basically um, and so I'm glad I tried another technique with it and it worked well um, and it was a bit easier than having to shade all those tiny little flowers. I could have used Tombow but I wouldn't have been able to cover up the black lines and I wanted to cover the black lines to give that little bit of a highlight to the flowers and I think I got the effect I wanted. The flowers were tiny but they stood out and I think, hopefully it doesn't look too colourful, but I think it sort of just added to the magical aspect of the page. 
So that was the page done and I have rambled on quite a lot. Sorry guys, um, I, was, I, I just really enjoyed colouring this page. So I just wanted to share my thoughts with you guys. Um, but yeah, that was the main part of the page done. And then as usual, I used some paint pens just to do some highlighting, um, which you'll see on screen. And the little bits and bobs that I hadn't coloured in yet, um, like the little pebbles on the ground, um, I used um, glitter gel pens just to fill it up and to give a bit of sparkle to the page and then right at the end off camera like I always mention um, I can't do it on camera my setting is not does not allow me to but I used a bit of Winsor & Newton white ink to do a sprinkling effect but I tried as much as I could um, not to get it on anything other than the sky to just make it look like a little bit of a starry sky rather than just dotted all over the page. So I tried to do that. Um, and yeah, that's the page done. And I really like how it's turned out because it's a little bit different for me. And I enjoyed every minute of coloring this page. For some reason, I think Hannah Carlson's pages, um, her illustrations are the ones that bring out my experimenting with colors, uh, using ran not random colors, but colors I don't normally um, naturally uh, go to. Um, and so I'm, I, I, for some reason, I just like to experiment in her books and um, it's just so much fun. Sorry, guys, I think I've gone on a bit, um, so I apologize for that. But I hope you guys have enjoyed listening to my thoughts about the page and how it sort of unfolded sort of as I was coloring it and my thoughts about it and how I was feeling about the page so yeah hopefully you enjoyed listening to that and um, more than that I hope you enjoy watching the video and if you do follow along like I always say do share it with me on email on Instagram I love seeing your pages it does make my day um, and I love seeing your versions um, of the pages too so yes please do share it with me and um, yeah, I hope I will be back with you guys soon with another color along or another video at least. Um, so until then, take care. Thank you for watching. Enjoy the rest of the video. Bye bye.